Hi, with this dish, I'm going to just cook a lovely grilled mushroom dish. I've got lovely big portobello mushrooms. I'm just going to take the center stalk out of that, just chop it in, mix it up with some nice red lentils. The lentils will bring protein into the dish. I'm going to toss that with some, uh, or finish it, I should say, with some nice stem broccoli. You don't have to use stem broccoli. It can be quite, quite expensive. The other broccoli, normal broccoli is lovely with this, or you don't have to use broccoli. Going to season it up with a selection of herbs. I you know, use using dried, it's the winter time here, so I don't have good access to good fresh ones and dried ones if used correctly are lovely seasonings. I got tarragon, thyme, oregano, and a little bit of smoked paprika just to make it interesting. And then I'm going to serve this with a sun dried tomato pesto. Now, I love using the mortar and pistol for pestos, um, so I but you could just as easily use a food processor with this. And one of the ingredients within that within this pesto is going to be, I'm using a base of sunflower seeds. Very often with pe pestos, you use pine nuts. And they cost an absolute fortune. They're gorgeous, but they cost a fortune. But sunflower seeds. Now, sunflower seeds are a very interesting ingredient because they give a lovely texture to pesto because they've got quite a very high fat content. Now, there's a lot of controversy about that because they tend to be very high in omega-6 fatty acids. Now, these are a whole seed. These are not a refined oil. So you must remember that, yes, they might be high with omega-6 fatty acids. And when digested, omega-6s do tend to follow a pro-inflammatory route in your body. Bearing in mind that inflammation is an important part of your body functions. That's how your immune system functions. And But also remember that sunflower seeds, they're not only made up of omega-6 fatty acids, um, and fats, but they're also very high in many, many nutrients. So when you're eating a whole seed, so I would not disregard them in any diet. I think it's a really bad idea with any diet to say anything is bad. Most, all foods have a purpose. So with the sunflower seed, what they're very high in is vitamin D. E. Vitamin E is a very, very potent antioxidant. Again, that can help combat oxidative stress, which can be a root cause of many arthritis symptoms. Um, so again, very important. Magnesium, they're a great source of magnesium. Magnesium is used in quite literally hundreds of bodily functions. So getting those sunflower seeds through that are a very, very good idea. They're also great, a good source of fiber. And interestingly, they're a good source of protein. So sunflower seeds in their whole form can form very important parts of a diet. And remember, the whole thing about good diet is balance. Once you start getting that balance right, you, again, <clears throat> excuse me, I like to use a good selection of plant-based proteins. I like to vary with a large amount of plant and plant-based proteins, but supplemented mainly with seafoods, but also with eggs, a little bit of good quality dairy and so on. And I, I don't say no to anything in a diet. I love my old Sunday roast sometimes. Um, but the sunflower seeds, don't dish them. They're good, they're great in a diet, and they're particularly good as a basis for making foods such as pestos and the like, and great in the salads. Okay, and I'm gonna get on and start cooking this dish, and I'm just gonna make the pesto first in a second. So there's two little jobs I want to do with this dish. The first job is, I'm gonna just prepare my mushrooms. Nothing to do with this, really. I'm just gonna take my mushrooms, take the central stalks out. Because I do intend to use these, and I broke my mushroom, but no panic. These things happen. <laughs> and you just put it back in. I've got it on a nice pan that can go under a grill or better still, even in an oven. Also the air fryer would be just wonderful for this. I'm just gonna chop those up in a second, chop them up anyway, and just to be able to use them in the dishes and cooking it. But the main thing I want to make now is my pesto. Now what I've done is I've taken my sun-dried tomatoes and I've chopped them by hand. And likewise, my fresh tomatoes, my fresh plum tomatoes. I think the kind of little, or not plum tomatoes, my fresh little cherry tomatoes. They're actually cherry plum tomatoes. But just chopped up a little bit because the mortar and pistol won't be able to uh, crush them properly otherwise. So chop them nicely. And then what I'm going to do is just take my garlic, a couple of cloves. You can use less garlic if you want. Don't panic. Into that also, I'm going to put a little pinch of salt. And I'm going to just very quickly crush the garlic. Now, you could easily just throw all these ingredients in a food processor. I understand sometimes with arthritis, the old mitts can be sore. So don't worry about doing it. Don't be too precise. I just like the mortar and pestle because crushing actions tend to give a little bit more flavor. Next up, my sunflower seeds. And I'm just going to give those a little bit of a crush 
with the garlic and the pinch of salt you see gives a bit of abrasiveness and that abrasiveness just is a very very good for just breaking down these couple of ingredients so quite quickly you'll find with the mortar and pistol that'll kind of go into a lovely kind of an oily kind of a mass next up it doesn't really matter what order we put things in now i'm just going to pop in my sun-dried tomatoes and just crush those through and again the fresh tomatoes are lovely in this as well because they will kind of give the whole dish a little bit of life just boost it up and also bring a bit of nice liquids into the dish as well lastly i'm just going to or finally i'm going to just pop my fresh tomatoes in there and just kind of mix those up together and that's all it takes to make a really nice simple tomato uh, tomato pesto and there's something very satisfying about using the oil mortar and pestle as well i don't know it's i, I just think it's the texture that's everything about the sauce just ends up better but as i said don't worry about throwing all the ingredients at the same time into a little food processor or even a hand blender whatever is convenient for yourself again look at these recipes more as guidelines and than absolute rules and then just to finish this just to get it up to a nice kind of a, a saucy kind of texture because you'll find this looks quite dense i'm going to put about 20 30 mil of olive oil in there so about four tablespoons and then with a good olive oil and then just kind of mix that and allow that emulsify together and that is my pesto done you can just check your seasoning then you could add a little piece of pepper i've already added salt so it doesn't really need any more and i'm just going to put that aside for when the dish is finished with my mushrooms i'm just going to give those a tiny little drizzle of oil and before i do anything i'm just going to pop those under a grill and allow them to just become a grilled mushroom simple as that so i'm going to get on and cook the rest of this dish now this dish i'm just going to add a tad of oil about a tablespoon into the pan and then straight away i'm going to add my celery my leeks the little mushrooms if you remember those little uh, the the stems of the mushrooms which i just chopped up and i'm just going to add a pinch of salt a pinch of pepper and i'm just going to cover those and allow them to sweat just for a minute after just about two minutes i'm now going to add my thyme my dried tarragon my dried oregano and my smoked paprika if you were using fresh herbs just simply add them at the end but with dried it's better to add them at this point next my red lentils which have been soaking in water going to mix those through there for a minute and then i'm going to add about three quarters of a cup to a cup of water just to allow to give some liquid for the lentils to cook and i'm just going to cover over that and i'm going to allow it to cook at a low simmer just to tenderize all the ingredients in particular the lentils red lentils do cook quite quickly but if you do find that your pan is getting a little dry and the, and the lentils aren't quite cooked just add another little drop of water and again allow them to simmer and cook down now when your red lentils are quite tender i'm just going to very simply turn off the heat completely and keep the lid on it on the pan and i'm just going to allow the, the, the flavors infuse and any of the remaining liquid just infusing with the lentils and just let them stand just like that completely off the heat no gas flame there at this point i'm just going to just very quickly check my seasoning adjust it i think i need just a tad more salt and a bit of pepper bearing in mind that you don't need garlic because there's plenty of garlic in the pesto and good food is all about good balance so as you can see the lentils have soaked up all the water and i have this lovely tasty little lentil dish now what i'm going to do is very simply fill my mushrooms so 
as I'd mentioned, mushrooms had been cooking away under the grill. So there they are there, just nicely grilled. They're just become a little bit tender. And now, and don't worry if one of those breaks like that. And now I'm just going to very simply use my lentil mixture and fill my mushrooms. Now, of course, I have three mushrooms. You could probably have plenty, plenty more. Uh, don't be worrying about that. It's good to have a little bit too much than too little. And this is a dish, it's not very calorie heavy, so you can eat plenty of it. So, I'm just gonna pop those like that, just flatten them down just a tad. I'm just gonna pop those onto the grill there, just to get a little bit of smokiness, a little bit of flavor. And as they're cooking, I'm just going to finish my broccoli. So, I'm just going to pop them onto the grill. They'll only take a minute to finish now at this stage. As my mushrooms that are stuffed with my lentils, so just under the salamander, or grill, excuse me, that's how our what chefs call them, um, under the grill, I'm now going to just very quickly finish my broccoli. So, I've heated a pan. I'm just going to put about five tablespoons or about a quarter cup of water into that. And then I'm just going to put my broccoli in there. And that is at the highest possible heat. Put a pinch of salt in there. And I'm going to cover that up. And broccoli only takes a few seconds to cook. And at the last minute, I'm going to good high heat, good tight fitting lid, and allow that to steam as the dish is finishing. Also, as my broccoli is just steaming away there, I'll very briefly just show you the little red pesto that I've made. And that'll be used to finish the dish. So having waited approximately four minutes with ice high heat and that little bit of water, that's my broccoli pretty much done. And just to finish that, I'm just going to put a little drop of olive oil on the last minute and give it a little toss with the olive oil. And as you can see, when you do it like this, you get this beautiful, lovely, fresh green color and everything is ready to go. There's nothing waiting around. So let's finish this dish. So first of all, my broccoli is ready. My pesto is ready, and there is my mushrooms just out of the oven. And as you can see, the lentils are a little bit toasty. There's a little bit of texture, if you like, a bit of crunch in those top lentils, which is why I put them back under the grill, because you don't want everything too soft. You want texture. So now to plate this dish, I'm just going to take my plate. Line it nicely. Now, first things first, my broccoli, which is just beautifully cooked, lovely and vibrant and green. And you can eat all the broccoli you want, really. So, I'm going to pop a generous helping of broccoli on my plate. Next up, I'm going to take one. You could eat two, depends what you fancy, of my mushrooms. I'm just going to place that on top of my broccoli. And then finally, my pesto. I'm just going to put a nice, generous dollop of my pesto atop the mushroom, maybe a little bit around, just kind of let it just drizzle and fall everywhere. Make the food look natural. Like the less handled food looks, in my view, the better it tends to be. And finally, my scallions or my spring onions. Just gonna get a little sprinkling of them on top. Maybe a pinch of black pepper. I think the dish overall is quite well seasoned anyhow. It doesn't probably need any more. Just gonna put a little bit of broccoli on. And that is the dish completed. A lovely little vegan dish with a nice little protein count, mushrooms, broccoli, lentils, and a lovely simple sunflower red sun-dried tomato pesto. Enjoy it.